So what's the trick in making all of this work? The trick is to have the right computing tools underneath. Um, so I just want to go through, and some of you know, uh, know of these technologies already, I just want to go through some of the technologies that are around and, and show you a little bit about how they might have played into it. So one of, one of the devices we're using um, quite uh, a lot across this community are, uh, are wikis. Um, you're all familiar, of course, with Wikipedia, which is uh, you know, just one particular wiki. So a wiki, for those who are not familiar, is an editable uh, web page. It allows people to authenticate, log in, and change what they're seeing. So if you think about the old model of publishing a web page where someone creates it and puts it up and everybody reads it, the difference with a wiki is that we put that up, but then the community edits that on the fly. Um, and so this is a wiki that was actually set up for one of the experiments, the science experiments, that we ran across the Pragma test bed. This is some work I did with Amanda Lynch on, on modeling uh, climate effects of, of uh, Savannah Burnoff. Uh, so we set up a, a particular wiki for it where we could put all sorts of information that we shared with our partners, like which machines we were using and where the source code was. And, and people from the different places would log in and change things. So you log into a wiki using, you, know, you get authenticated using some typical uh, text um, username and password. And once you're logged in, then you've got the, the rights to go and change various parts of it. So you might see the little edit tags have popped up there. And we can go through and change um, various things. So everybody now is seeing a common picture of what, what the experiment we're doing. This thing I might point on went on for six months. It was six months of elapsed time. So it wasn't enough just to write it down on little bits of paper and, uh, or email them around. Um, you can see there an edit screen. Again, you can't read the fine text, but someone can go in and actually change the web page on the fly. This is quite different from the standard push model where you, where you create a web page on, on a client machine and then push it out to the sites. Um, and you can go back through versioning. So if someone mucks up the web page, you can go back and pull back some uh, previous versions. Oops. Okay, so wikis um, are being used very extensively in this style of operation. Um, blogs are uh, another interesting phenomena. Uh, this guy, Ian Foster, is the guy who basically invented the whole e-science e-research agenda, um, largely credited with it. So Ian recently set up a blog. So he tours the world, he goes and goes to various conferences, and he writes what, he, what he's seen, what he's done. Um, and so, um, for example, you know, if you look down here, I gave a talk at a particular conference. Um, and then there's a link there off to the paper. You can go and look at the paper. So I'm not quite sure uh, how much of an exhibitionist you need to, to, to run your own. How many people here run their own blog? <sighs> there you go. Okay, so this is, this is changing. And I think, again, if you think of this in the e-research context of trying to do global science, we're trying to share information. We want people to know where we've been, who we've spoken to, and what we've done. <coughs> okay, another thing we learned from our kids, in fact, is, uh, is how to use some of the simple tools that come with standard uh, operating systems. So Windows comes with uh, Windows Messenger. Um, and this becomes, a, again, a standard tool for use in this environment. So we're all working on a problem. We've got our wiki set up. We're sharing information that's, that's available. But there's a lot of chat that goes on. Uh, we installed this code, it didn't work. Uh, we did this, what happened? So, so this is you know, the, the text equivalent of telephone. It's very convenient. People are there. You can see when they appear. Uh, my kids think it's hilarious that I've got them on my, on my uh, home, you know, my uh, MSN. How many dads are on their MSN? So, um, so you pop up uh, screens, and, uh, and you can just use chat between them. I did actually check what was written on that one before I captured it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think I was in Minneapolis and this guy was in Australia and we were chatting about something I was doing the following day. Um, Skype is also another variant of, of uh, Messenger in some sense, very commonly used. Um, it uses a slightly different protocol for communication. Skype uh, has exceptionally good um, audio. And so you'll find a lot of people now using that instead of the public switch network. Um, so this is a collaborator I have at UCSD. Um, it also overloads that with chat, so you can have chat sessions as well. You can do multi-party conference calls. So we can set up audio conference calls. And reasonably recently, they added video. Um, well, and I have to say, it's not too bad. 
So again, we use video. This is a collaborator of mine in uh, Los Alamos. Actually, you can't use Skype from within Los Alamos facility, but he was at home at the time. <laughs> you can tell he was at home because that's his ironing board. Yeah. In the <laughs> <laughs> um, so Skype's very commonly used and empowers a lot of this. Um, but then there are a lot of value add tools. And so, you, again, this screen's way too small for you to read. Um, I have a, I have a, a, a colleague um, who's in, US, in Singapore now at NUS, he was at Griffith with me, who developed a set of tools for doing collaborative um, sharing on documents. So collaborative word processing using Word, collaborative PowerPoint using um, uh, PowerPoint. So they actually have these tools, they're called CoWord, CoPowerPoint, um, where it looks and feels just like a normal Word session or PowerPoint session, but in fact what's happening is multiple people are at different places working on the one document. And you can actually just make out here that there's some tags lying around saying who created which bit of this document. So again, collaborative tools for bringing people together to do research. Um, there's a collaborative PowerPoint session. So it looks and feels like, in fact, these are plugins into uh, Microsoft's tools to allow you to do um, collaborative work. We make a lot of use of video conferencing technology. Does anyone recognize the pictures on the left-hand side? Come on, many of you are as old as I am. 2001, 2001, 2001, okay. In fact, the top picture is Hayward Floyd talking to his daughter. Um, where he was, of course, was in the uh, space station. The top picture on the right is my daughter at home when I was in San Diego. I was in this uh, Marriott residence in at the bottom. So and that was in about 2003. So we got the year sort of right, but the technology of where I was was not quite right. <laughs> but video conferencing has matured to the point where we really can use it as a first-class research tool. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, um, a press release from a few years ago for a, a video wall that we built in the school. And you can actually get a very good picture of what's happening there. Um, two of us are sitting in front of this full-scale full -scale video wall with a camera in the middle talking to people at the other end. <coughs> this end was at Clayton, the other end was down at Caulfield. It was running over the campus backbone. Full uh, MPEG-2 streaming video at uh, 30 frames a second. There's some other screenshots of that. Um, in fact, the top right picture is when uh, Richard Alston came and launched it for us. <coughs> and we actually had a lot of fun with that because that's a ribbon actually going through the wall. <laughs> he was cutting one end and we had someone down at the other end cut the other end. Um, so this was set up in the tea room. It was a social experiment as much as anything to see what happened when you put one of these things in the tea room. I don't have time to talk about all that now, but I'd be happy to afterwards as a social experiment. But people could walk in. It would actually automatically turn on at both ends whenever anyone walked in. So you had this virtual wall onto the other campus. Um, we used it for all sorts of things. We used it for staff meetings. This was a, a, a mind-boggling staff meeting we ran runtime. Our school was spanning the two campuses, so we regularly ran staff meetings across the 10-kilometer gap. Uh, but the picture at the bottom left is Malaysia running Polycom equipment, <coughs> different equipment. And what they were doing is they were looking through into Clayton, and you can't make it out probably on the screen then, but they could actually see all the way through down through the Clayton Tea Room, which was <coughs> quite long, into, um, into Caulfield. John, I think you were in Malaysia at the time and took the photo, actually. Yeah. So um, the interesting thing is that person there is me trying to chair this meeting across between Malaysia, Clayton, and Caulfield, and it was quite a challenging thing. Uh, on the other hand, the Malaysia bit didn't become routine, but the Caulfield-Clayton thing was our regular way of running staff meetings. This was another use for the, for the tea room, um, using it in a teaching mode. So what you're looking at here is me talking up the front with a normal PowerPoint presentation, and looking to the back of the room, what I see is the front of the other room. So I'm looking through a very long lecture hall. Um, I had some doubts as to whether this worked until one day I walked in with a demo was going on and I saw someone in the remote audience put their hand up and the lecturer in the, in the, in the place where I was said, yes, what's your question? And they had this dialogue through the wall over the top of the um, audience. It was really quite uh, empowering. Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> um, uh, a 